Deborah Callahan here. I'm so delighted to present uh, my guest today, Dr. Jacqueline Maxwell. Dr. Jackie is an author and advanced grief recovery specialist, motivates people to push through adversities, eradicate misspoken labels of impossibilities, and face the staggering impact of destiny incompleteness. Welcome, Dr. Jackie. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for this opportunity, Debbie. Well, thank you for being here. So you have such expertise in the field and you know, you and I had a hard time picking just one thing to focus on today. <laughs> Uh, but given the recent experience I had in my own family, I was hoping that we could talk about men and grief and how it's a little bit different with um, men than it is for women. Why do you, do you feel that the, this needs to be addressed? Wow. Well, absolutely. Again, thank you for this opportunity. And, and so, you know, you're right. We, we wanted to kind of narrow it down a little bit. And we said, okay, we can talk about men. Well, Debbie, I'm, I'm just going to say this. While I am and have some uh, expertise, some knowledge, some experience, as far as men, I'm not an expert when it comes to men, but by, by all means, when we're talking about grief and loss, and I recognize that there are times in which um, we might not realize that men and women grieve differently, regardless of if it's a man or a woman, it's imperative that we grasp hold that grieving is normal and natural. Mm -hmm. You know, it's grieving is a normal and natural response to any type of loss, re regardless of the loss, whether it's a death, a divorce, a move, a wedding, you know, any type of loss. And then the other definition that I utilize with, with the persons that I work with, men and women, is it, grieving is that experience that you have when, when there's any change in a familiar pattern of behavior. Mm -hmm. So that's the one that, I, that really I connect with is that is the one about any change in a familiar pattern of behavior. So, you know, when, when we think about men and women, what often happens is, is it's from a socialization perspective is what happens. We are socialized, especially when it comes to, to grieving, is to don't feel, don't feel, don't feel bad. Stop crying. If you're going to make all that noise, you need to go into your room, go sit in the car. And while that might sound harsh, think about it. With, especially with little boys, the socialization is up, oh, nah, -uh, be a man. Now, mm -hmm. this is a four year old child, and stop all that crying and be a man. You know, boys don't, boys don't act like that. It plays out as years go by it plays out in different ways. Men don't always have that space to grieve. Why? Because no one wants to hear it. That's what they've been told. It's so, it's so true. And I know for me that men have come to me and said, you know, Debbie, I have no one to talk to about this, you know, or they perceive that they have no one to talk to about it because men aren't talking to other men about this. So you know, and when they finally do open up, they're always surprised to find out that other people are going through similar things and also have no outlet. So yeah, it's just, it's pervasive. You know, and I think they, um, in my experience, well, each man is different, right? Each human is different. But, you know, I've even talked to doctors who have chosen specialties based on the fact that they don't know how to grieve and they don't know how to, uh, they wouldn't be able to handle losing a patient. And they wouldn't, um, and they recognize that they don't have the skills to deal with families who are grieving. So then mm -hmm. they choose a completely different specialty. But I mm -hmm. think from my perspective that men just often feel very isolated in their grief mm -hmm. and don't know what to do. Yeah. So, you know, do you find that also? Is that what Most your experience definitely. is? Mm -hmm. that, that's been my experience. Whether I'm working with um, a person in a leadership role or whether I'm working with someone um, you know, in, in, out in the community. But what I often hear, and I've even read some studies about this, you know, they, they agree in one of the studies, and I think Ber Burnham is the um, researcher, talks about what he learned was all of them unanimously said, yeah, men and women grieve differently. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that they said the, that was most prominent is they were all concerned about being blamed and shamed discounted, 
So it was real easy to what I call resort to STIRBs, short-term energy relieving behaviors. Okay, it, it's just, it, it seems to be easier to go to something that will suppress that pain temporarily for a short, short time, mm -hmm. rather than trying to figure out who am I going to talk to? Don't nobody want to hear it. That they told me as a child, go to your room. And so what this final thing that the study stated that I think is the answer is what they all unanimously wanted and what they even when they did their poll and did so without others knowing what they were writing mm -hmm. they all stated they wanted someone to listen mm -hmm. yeah that's what we all want so what are these short term what are some examples of these short term things that people okay. you know to use to stuff it down that be sure i'm glad you asked because that's that is is key um alcohol drugs mm -hmm. Yep. Shopping. <laughs> yes, that kind of I mean, anything yeah. that we believe that brings us relief or anything that you say that's a soothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eating. 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 Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes right. I, I don't know about you, but I remember as a child having an experience in which I, I, I was crying. And what my parents said was, go wash your face and come back. Now, I don't know what the big deal about going and wash your face. I haven't figured that one out yet. But go wash your face, come back. And then it was like, look what I got for you. And it was a cookie. Mm. And, and Debbie, I'm going to tell you that the short version of how that played out in my life was obesity. Because what that taught me, when things didn't feel right, I didn't feel good, I was hurting. Now understand, they never heard the story of what happened and why I was outside crying. They just know they told me to come in the house. Think about it, for men, the same thing. I mean, for, for more often than not, what is embraced is anger. Anger. Mm -hmm. But what is denied is pain. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, for sure. So. And Mm -hmm. gonna, that was my next question. Like, how do you how do you see this showing up? The unprocessed grief when when men don't process their grief, which you know most of us have issues with that. Mm -hmm. How does this show up? Right. Well, and I think something you said earlier is so very key, and that is we all grieve differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like re regardless of our background, our experience, even regardless of if we are sharing in the same loss. So let's say if a, a husband and a wife lose a baby, mm -hmm. it will grieve differently. For sure. Okay. Absolutely. And I think that's a you know a lot of what you're saying. Here. And how does how might um some of this show up is isolating. More often, even in the same study that I, I was reading, the isolation is what often men resorted to because it felt like it was what would be the most acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, society was would it will accept me if I go off to myself, and they'll just say, "Oh, he's grieving. Give him space. Give him time." Well, those are myths. Those that's the I call that the miseducation of the griever. We we have to undo those so that men and women, but so that men hear and know. Yeah, it, expressing it might look different. Something I've heard some men say, Debbie, is often when they work with men, instead of a face-to-face -face conversation, they'll walk side by side. Yeah. Have you heard that before? Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like a parallel thing. And I, and I think about this with men in their activities that they do with other men, golfing, you know, um, whatever they do, it's, it's side by side and women are just facing each other more often. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's just us. You know, we'll lean into each other and grab each other's hand and say, and we'll even say girl and child. Yeah. And, you know, we, we might be 65 years old, but it's still girl. And, you know, <laughs> it's just a different social dynamic. Um, but that side to side thing, you know, so so walking and talking is, is really a, a good way of, of expressing and exploring with mm -hmm. other men. Um, and, and, I share this because I think it's key. My husband is, 
a fourth generation pastor. Mm -hmm. And that's something that he's very gifted in is helping other uh, pastors, persons in leadership roles, mm -hmm. other men to grieve, to move forward, to talk, to talk things through by listening as well as by mentoring in a way, you know, as, as far as being an elder in the community. But that isolation, and it, and it goes back to that, that shame, you know, often just believing it's shameful for me to have this. Uh, another thing that I see, and I actually just saw this yesterday, someone lost, um, that I know lost their son. Mm -hmm. And so, and his comment was, you know, this is hard. We didn't see this coming. But I'll be back to work tomorrow because I, you know, I, can, I, don't, I don't know what else I can do. Right. So, yeah, you know, like I have two brothers. I'm the only um, girl in my family. So mm -hmm. um, I and our recent experience in our family, uh, one brother stuffed, fit, stuffed his feelings down, you know, by just, you know, pre pretending that they weren't there. And well, not pretending they weren't there, but he um, stuffed them down. And the other one just tried to take control and make things happen. So, you know, to control the whole, control the situation and everything will be better. That's right. And that's how they dealt with it. Um, so it was really interesting for me as an observer to, to see that and that mm -hmm. neither one of them had tools to express their grief for what was happening in this situation. Mm -hmm. what, what would be the guidance that you would give any men watching on how to deal with their grief in a healthy way? Mm -hmm. with law, any loss or grief in a healthy way. Do you have any tips or tricks or advice that you give to your clients? Yeah, absolutely. And, and even to tie what you, you were saying earlier, as far as unprocessed, you know, how do you do that? How do you bring that together with, with you know, being healthy and, 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 whole, and being in a, in a better place, but still honoring, and, that, and that's key, I'll come back to that, but still honoring the, that relationship that is lost. But I, what I call it is being able to move to a place of completeness. Well, what I mean by that is addressing the undelivered communication. Okay. okay. Yeah. Things that we, and, and that unresolved grief is almost always about things that we had desired to be better, more, or different. That's 100%. just, I mean, that's just how it yeah. is. And then, but we, we don't, do, when we don't do anything with it, that's when our wounds leak on other people, okay? That's when our pain, you know, becomes somebody else's pain. You know, that's, that's when it becomes difficult and the, our rela current relationships are, are stretched or distorted with family members, with loved ones, work relationships, all of those. But that unresolved grief, you know, one of the things that I do have the opportunity to do as an advanced grief recovery specialist. I'm certified by the Grief Recovery Method Institute. And I, I did the work on me. Once I actually did my work mm -hmm. and recognized, yeah, I had some grief concerning some, some daddy-daughter issues, some losses, things that I desired to be better, more indifferent. Once I did that work, then I was able to move forward. Then I, there was some completion. I didn't say closure, but some completion. So what did that look like? Well, what that looks like is a, taking a look at, so is this about pride? pride? Hmm. Is this about unforgiveness? You know, there, there are various things that we, we have to address, have to take a look at. And, and by doing that work, what I have found is then as people share and open up, there's some other healing opportunities, such as journaling. You know, mm -hmm. I'll find someone who said, well, you know, I, yeah, I journal all the time. And I said, okay, so th then let's write, let's talk about this from a different perspective. Do and so that, once- Do men embrace journaling? <laughs> that, well, there are some men who are, are writers, yes. you know, they yes. really enjoy writing. Now, I might not use the word journaling with everybody, right. but- <laughs> You know, they might say, yeah, I, I'm, I might need to write that down. Or, you know, they might be working on a book or working on a project. Another thing that's real, and, it's, and it seems real simple, but it's real important, breathing. Mm. So very often as grievers, it's too easy to get in a, 
in a very shallow breathing, not from that di diaphragmic, you know, from the diaphragm perspective, really taking those deep breaths and inhaling and truly exhaling and bringing, you know, bringing in what we need as far as air and oxygen, but also releasing what we, we no longer need, what we no longer have the capacity to continue to hold. And so, you know, the breathing, that's, that's one of the tips. The writing is something about putting that pen to paper. And, and I get you, you, you know, it doesn't, it's not always, the journaling might not be the term, but there are times when just getting it out there. And, and I'll use my husband as an example. You know, instead of typing out um, a sermon or in, instead of type, you know, actually, you know, putting something on a computer, he'll get a legal pad. And to be able to transfer what he's saying through his hand and push that pen down into that paper, really it is explosive for him mm -hmm. and so you know the writing the breathing um we and, and and the exercising you know that that movement what does that movement do it, that movement is so very important because th those those feelings connect you know when we don't grieve properly or when we hold it in physically it connects to our body Mm -hmm. So it's imperative to be able to, to, to walk it out, talk it out, move it out. Yeah. I mean, Perfect. from dancing to, you know, any, anything that's going to create that move, movement, basketball, softball, but it's, it's still pushing through and not staying in a place that's debilitating and, and a stuckness. That's great advice, but it's perfect for, for all of us, actually, but yeah, particularly for men. But do, would you have any other tips that we, you would give males who are in, in leadership positions, you know, dealing with their own grief, but also dealing with, you know, the grief around them? You know what? It, and I'm so glad we're talking about this because I don't know how, if leaders and persons in leadership positions are aware of how much grieving is in the workplace. It is playing a major, major role. It, it always has, but especially after the pandemic or during, I'm gonna say just during the pandemic, I, I'm not even gonna give the impression that I'm thinking that the pandemic is over, <laughs> but especially during this time of shifting, you know, it, it, things are going on like never before. Persons have left, have and you know, left positions, retired, working from home. Mm -hmm. You know, um, persons that are being told that you know, come in the next few weeks, they will now have to work on site. Well, these are parents, men, as well as women, who have made the decision to be do the parenting from home, as far as their children. And now they're being instructed that they have to return to a brick and mortar workplace environment. Mm -hmm. And now I said all of that, but I didn't even touch those who've passed away, those who've had loved ones who have passed away. And grief in the workplace has, I mean, statistically, it affects so many, it affects productivity, outcomes, more often than not, um, an extraordinary amount of money is spent on disciplinary actions when there was grief in the workplace and no one acknowledged it. Mm. How do we do that? Be, first of all, becoming educated. Mm -hmm. Becoming educated. Um, that also comes with, like, my desire is to speak more with human resources and, and helping them to see a different place in which they can move forward, making this awareness known. And then incorporating that in some in-services, you know, uh, uh, ensuring that that's an important element of um, a progression of leading. Um, effective leaders are effective grievers. Mm -hmm. um, I did a, 
I think I did a blog several years ago and really just focused on, okay, how, how can I lead effectively if I'm not allowing myself to grieve? You know, grieve whatever those losses are so I can move on. It might be, I didn't get the position I thought I was gonna get. Mm -hmm. Or they, they froze the position. It's not that I can't, I can't get the position, but the position is frozen. So I'm now thinking, um, I, I don't know what's gonna happen as far as my income or I'm going to retire in a few years and everyone around me is younger than I am and I don't know how I connect with my current environment any longer. It's just, mm -hmm. I mean, um, and, and so whether it's a male leadership position or a female in a leadership position, the key is it being sensitive to what's going on with your employees, with your staff, with your colleagues, that's, yes, that's so neat. important. Yeah. yeah, thank you for that. So I, this has been such a fabulous chat with so much information. Um, if people um, listening would like to reach out to you and work with you, where can they find you, Dr. Jackie? Oh, um, well, one, you can go to my website, jacklavelle.com. You can go to the website and I encourage you to do that so that I can, can talk with you so that we can have a conversation. I also do transformational coaching. So persons that say, you know, I'm in a place, but I know I need to be somewhere else. I, I haven't really been dreaming. And then also I welcome you to be a part of my um, broadcast. I do broadcasts on Tuesdays, Facebook, Instagram, um, as well as LinkedIn. And it's Tuesdays at 7 p.m navigating grief and loss. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for being a part of this today. This was a treat. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity and thank you for the work that you're doing.